Now we want to understand functions. First, we want to create the prototype, that is the declaration of the function, then the definition, and then the call to the function. So we will use pseudocode to create this threefold step in order to use functions and to grasp the idea of declaring, defining, and finally calling the function. Here we have the return type, for example, integer character floating point. We'll see the types later on. The function name, the parentheses to start the the declaration of the parameters. The parameter type, which is basically, again, any type that the C programming language supports. Then parameter A, which is just any variable name, comma, which separates one parameter from the other. Parameter type, again, for the parameter B in this occasion. So each type and a parameter couple is separated by a comma. You could avoid specifying the variable names for the parameters because really the linker only checks for the concordance of the types of the prototype against the function definitions return in parameter types. I use the ellipses to indicate that there can be any number of parameters depending on how much RAM you have on your computer, but really it is unlimited in the theoretical sense. So parameter type and parameter name are, again, used for any number of parameters that you can pass to the function. In this case, we're simply declaring it so that we can use this function without being afraid of wrongfully calling the function with mismatch variable types. We can group function prototypes. This is another function. It returns another type and it is called another function name. Firstly, the return type is specified, then the function name. First parameter type is specified for the parameter A. The parameter type for parameter B is also specified and so on. So function prototypes go here at the top of the file if you're just using a one source code file. And then at the bottom below the main function, again, if you're only using one source file, you define the function. By defining it, you are simply specifying the code to be executed by the function when you call it on the main function or any other function. In this case, you can notice a striking similarity between the declaration and the definition. There are minuscule differences between the declaration and definition syntax, but we will take a look at that later on. For now, bear in mind that the prototype has to end with a semicolon. Instead, the definition's body will start with a curly bracket and end with a close a curly bracket to end the function's code block. You can observe that we have the same parameter types and parameter names list as in the function prototypes. And then in order to specify the code to be executed when the function is called, we have to create a code block by opening a curly bracket and then you see a series of statements. C statement 1, C statement 2, and so on. You can have any number of statements that your program requires up until the limits of the target system. So we have any given number of statements, which can be variable declarations, variable definitions, loops, flow control statements, and so on. Generally speaking, the argument passed from the call of the function into the parameters of the definition are going to be used inside these statements to modify the values and return a value that is significant to the caller. Statements are executed one after the other up until the end of the code block. We close the curly bracket. The function code block is just like any other code block from other constructs like the if code block, the loop code block, the definition code block of structures, and so on. More details on that later. And we see that we can create another function definition for another function name. And it's very similar. Again, the return type is specified, the function name is specified, the parameter types, and the parameter names, which is in this case is parameter A, parameter B, and so on. We open the curly bracket again, see statement 1, see statement 2. You can have as many statements as it is required to compute your task in this function. The ellipses, because it's pseudocode, we can use them here. And we see that we close the curly bracket to end the code block of the function. So function definitions go here, below the main function, when you're using a single source file. And pseudocode is used. We couldn't really compile this pseudocode. It is not legitimate C syntax. And here at the main function, we can call the functions that we defined below and prototype above. Remember, the function must be called within the body of the main function or any other function that is called within main or any other function that is called within the function that is called within main and so on. We simply press enter and add the function call where we want to call it. For that we see this syntax function underscore name. You don't specify the types when you're calling it. That's the difference. We don't need to do that because the corroboration of types is done at the linking phase when the 
definition is checked for the type matching of the parameters and the return value with the declaration. In this case, we call the function only with the variable names. The types are implicit. They are called arguments or actual parameters. So really, what is being done here is another function name is being called by the main function, although potentially the caller could be just any other function. And the return type is being assigned to variable label. Here is the list of arguments that will be passed to the definition of the function into the parameters. What we have at the end is parameter n, again, representing the last argument being passed to the n parameter in the definition. Function calls go inside the main and other functions as well, and it's encouraged to use a lot of function calls to have modularity in your code, which means to divide and conquer, that is, to have any code that does something specific encapsulated in a function. And functions can call other functions, which is called nesting functions. Pseudocode has been used throughout this video in order to explain the concepts behind prototyping, defining, and calling a function. See lends itself for the functional programming paradigm.